As the sun goes down in Singapore, the engines rev up. Night time means race time, and everyone is looking to be the man to take down Caesar t pain Welcome to Marina Bay, this is round 9 of the late-breaking online racing league. The concept of a night race around a street circuit was a novel one back in 2008 when the country hosted its first race, 10 years later, and Singapore has become a staple of the F1 calendar. The race itself is one of the most physically demanding for the drivers as they have to cope with bumpy surfaces and humid temperatures. Besides this, the circuit is notorious for its close barriers that will punish you for marginal errors. The smallest snap of oversteer or braking just a little bit too late can mean that your race is over. It isn't easy to pass around the string of Singapore streets, but a good run out of the sweeping final corner can give you an opportunity into the opening few corners. Carnes and Hickey enjoyed a great battle here last season as the two of them went side by side, Hickey narrowly keeping the position. He wasn't able to hold on for that much longer though. The DRS run down to turn seven gives the best chance of the lap and Carnes took full advantage as he stuck it around the outside. A smart move as this thing gave him the inside line to defend for the next corner. Hickey was tempted to make a vengeance move, but it wasn't to be. He did end up finishing the race P2 though, mostly due to this clinical overtake he made on Sam with just a few laps to go until the end. You'll find more corners around here than any other circuit on the calendar, 23 in total, 14 to the left and 9 to the right. Last season, Gilly won this race by a full 30 seconds. Can the driver on pole today assert the same kind of authority on the race? Well, yes, like you said, Gilly managed to dominate here last year, and that's due to his strategy. We've seen that the one stop is playing a major part of this season, and I've spoken to Caesar T playing uh, in between races behind the scenes, and he said he will never qualify on the softest tyre. So he is looking to do a one stop as a uh, Curly Apex, who has emerged from the pits on the softest tyre. So if it stays as he is doing on his strategy, he's going to be doing the two stop. Yeah, I can imagine a lot of drivers today are going to go for that one-stop strategy, starting on the ultra-soft tyre and then going to the super-soft tyre in the race. The hyper-soft tyres, they wear very quickly. And uh, another factor is tyre temperature. Singapore, above anywhere else, uh, really contributes to high tyre temperatures, especially on that softest compound. So if you can avoid being on them, I think a lot of drivers will. Curly Apex going through the very tricky third sector under the tunnel now. Uh, Williams actually looks lovely in this kind of yellow and blue light that comes down onto the track from the, uh, the, the artificial lighting. Here he comes around a very quick left-hand corner past the pit entry to start the lap. Let's see what Curly Apex could do at the start of this tricky, long session. Yeah, Curly Apex has picked up 15 points this season. They were all achieved in one race. He, of course, got third place in Canada, but no other points other than that. Will that be able to change here in Singapore? Oh, and he goes very wide, uh, nearly colliding with the wall. In fact, he might have just brushed it as he puts on the DRS as he goes down the long straight. I call it a straight. It does actually have a massive curve in it. But into turn seven, we saw some great battling around these parts last season. Uh, Jack Hickey, Carnes, yourself, Sam, getting into some great battles in the middle sector. Ricky, he's got to be one of the main contenders. He got a pole position earlier on in the league. Uh, that was at Spain. Of course, he nearly capitalised on that with a win until a... Oh, Mena oh, has retired from the session early on. So he will start from the back of the grid. Yeah, it looks like the Mainer is pulling it in the wall as Curly Apex is a 138.7. We're expecting laps to come in a little faster than that. We'll see what Jack Hickey does, who I think is the next man closest to the start-finish line. But his lap... Sorry, yeah, you're right. Now they've all come into the pits. And so is Jay Ghosts. The Pooley boy uh, just about to start his lap as he goes around the final corner. He is on the ultra soft tyre. Um, so in the end, he did op opt for that strategy. He was not sure which one to go with. Uh, and you can see that Psycho Sane and Nelez, who were on the ultra soft tyres, have started their laps. Well... Ricky has put into the chat that he is frustrated because people aren't aware of their flying lap. So I wonder if Mena had an instant in front of those three guys and has caused them to have to dive into the, the pit lane there. And uh, Jack Hickey has got a DRS issue. So uh, I wonder if that's going to affect his qualifying lap or if it can get into the pits and get that sorted. Yeah, perhaps there are circuits where a DRS issue would matter more, but it would still be important as Psycho Sengo's quickest with a 138.2. 
And there's another complaint of DRS broken. Hippoody Boy and Purple Petrol both having DRS faults. As you hang his slots into uh, provisional pole by a tank in front of Mr. Psycho Sang. Yeah, Johannes goes pole. Uh, that is on the old hypersoft tyres, I should say. Uh, Hippoody Boy. I think he had an invalidated lap. He did. Sake. But of course, it would have been 10 seconds slower anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and there's home back. We saw him have an epic fight with Mayna last time out. So as he brushes the wall there. Uh, his battle seems to be with the barriers rather than Mayna so far this week. And he's gone very deep oh. into that corner there. Tough to control around these streets. And if you make the smallest of mistakes, you can career into the barriers. Homeback narrowly avoids that fate until he oh. goes right into the barrier on the chicane. Did I jinx him? Yes, absolutely you did. Yes, as Ricky negotiates this first sector and now he puts on the DRS... Difficult to know what kind of a setup to go with here because it is pretty downforce orientated. But if you change your setup slightly, you can make up a lot of time on those straights as he goes through the next few corners. A lot of these corners chain together. So if you get a bad entry through one, he misses the apex there. It can make it difficult for the next corner coming up. Uh, still seems to be doing a decent job though, Ricky. He's targeting a 138.1, remember, that is set by Johannes. Still only four times set, uh, with just over nine minutes to go. Yeah, Hapuli Boy is having another lap invalidated, I think, because he's starting another flying lap on the Ultrasoft tyres and uh, has not set a time. Yeah, we've got quite a few guys on laps at the moment. Uh, Curly Apex, Hapuli Boy, Season T Pain, I thought was, but he's dived into the pits. Purple Petrol's on a lap, uh, so we should start to see a few more times come in. Uh, how close or whether they'll be overtaking uh, the 138.1 from Johannes is another question. Uh, yeah, Hapuli Boy just went round a corner rather quickly. I think he's clipped the wall there, so he might have minor front wing damage to his front right. I have to say, I think these times are beatable. Jay Ghosts, I know it's time trial, but he managed to do a lap that is four seconds quicker than the time that's set by Johannes. And you can see with Ricky there, he's gone one and a half seconds quicker than Johannes. He goes on to provisional pole on the ultra soft tyres. That will be a good lap. Oh, Hapuli Boy is smashed into the wall and he's missed the pit entry. So he's going to have to do a whole lap of the longest time circuit with only half a front wing. Yeah, I think he would just wanted to get his lap in, which he's done, but it's not a great one. Yeah, and Purple Petrol's gone into P6 with a 139. Um, yeah, Hapuli Boy, he of course got pole position last time out. Uh, and with half the session gone, he's not making a great attempt to claim that spot again. Yeah, it looks stunning and it is stunning. Oh. It's, oh, DJ Marshall, to be fair, a collision with that barrier isn't too bad. If you avoid damage, uh, you don't slow yourself down too much. So I wouldn't be surprised if he still puts in something relatively competitive here. Uh, as he goes through the final two corners, seems to have nailed both of those. Last one now, 23 of 23, and DJ Marshall crosses the line and he goes into P2 at 137.7. And there's only four minutes to go. Jack Icky started the race P2 last time out in Singapore. And he seems to have negotiated one, two, and three very well. He started on the front row in 50% of the races this so far this year. So even though he is on the ultra soft tyres, he should be able to be competitive again. Now, Caesar T playing is still out on those tyres. And this is always oh, cut the corner massively there. To the, I think he's trying to get back to the pit as quick as possible because he's realised there's only 2 minutes 50 in. He's getting, change his tyres, get back out, do the warm-up lap, and start the race in less than three minutes time that's gonna to be tough to do then that's not doable is it oh, i think he, oh, he I can, think... yeah he can he can definitely get back out there it'll, it'll be fine he needs to get out with one minute 36 left on the clock yes yes so he has got a little bit of time uh playing a risky game though isn't he uh jack hickey now is he going to be able to compete with the top guys? He usually can. He's gone into P2, a 136.7, again on the ultra soft tyres. So a competitive lap from the Toro Rosso. Ben, Caesar T. Payne is still in the pit lane. He's still in the pit lane, and I think that's pretty much the cutoff. So I think Caesar T. Payne isn't going to set a lap time for the third consecutive race. He won the previous two, though, so don't rule him out just yet. Still a risky strategy from him. Jay Ghosts now in the final sector. A 136.5.
is what he needs to beat. Ricky is in the pit, so we know he won't improve on his lap time. There are others still going strong out on circuit, though. Jay Ghost now. Two corners to go. Crosses the line, and Jay Ghost has got provisional pole position on 136.2. Also, a great lap from Purple Petrol. He's gone into P5. It is on the hyper soft tyres, but he's well in the mix as well. A Puli boy now. Yes. Caesar, Caesar T. Payne is on an out lap. Um, that's going to count for very little, I'm afraid. Oh, he's trying to cut as many corners as he can. You saw him there, but there aren't that many corners that you can cut around here. I think with 30 seconds I, to I, go, he's not going to make it. DJ Marshall improves to P5 on the ultra soft tyres. That gives him a good starting position for the race. Not many left out on track now. Johannes and Hapuli Boy are two of them. They're down in P10 and P11 at the moment. So there's need for improvement there. Hapuli Boy only a 139 on the board right now. This will be quicker than that. But how much quicker? That's the question. Hapuli Boy just P9. Only P9 for Hapuli Boy. So he's got a lot of work to do in the race. Johannes is in the middle of sector right now. How far can he get up the grid? Yep, Johannes is the only one on a lap then. Jay Ghost has got provisional pole position with a 136.2. Ricky is currently set to start P2. Jack Hickey P3. Mr. Psycho Sane P4. Can Johannes get anywhere near the top guys? Give himself the best chance going into the race. He hasn't done too well in qualifying so far this year. Is this anything? No, he's slower. He is slower. So Johannes P8 will be his starting position. But that does confirm that Jay Ghost's I think home back is oh, still going. Oh, okay. Home back is still going. Home back elevates himself into P5. Uh, but that does confirm that Jay Ghost has picked up his fourth pole position in the league this year. Alongside him on the front row will be Ricky. And here we go, the 14 cars driving out of the formation lap. And it is the papaya car of Jay Ghost who's leading the way. He'll be looking to convert pole position into a win. He's been on pole four times now in the league this year. His qualifying prowess is definitely up there. Will he be able to convert it into a race win? Ricky's going to start on the front row with him. We know he's got pace around here as well. And watch out for Jack Hickey behind them in P3. All of these guys are going to start on the ultra soft tyres, by the way. Uh, that's true all the way down to P6. You've got Mr. Psycho Sane in P4. And then Homeback is going to start P5. A good qualifying session for him as he improved right at the death. DJ Marshall is going to start P6. Purple Petrol is going to start the hyper soft tyre in P7. We'll have to see how long he can go before he needs to pit. Johannes starts P8. Nelez is starting P9. And then Hapuli Boy is starting P10. But we believe it's on quite old ultra soft tyres. So he's in a difficult situation going into the race. Curly Apex is outside of the top 10. He's going for the ultra soft tyres. Caesar T-Pain, though, is going for the soft, uh, sorry, the hardest compound of the lot, the soft compound tyres. So he will go a long way into this race if he avoids any damage. Maynard, P13, he was unable to set a lap time in qualifying. And the same can be said for Gilzo in the Force India. He is on the ultra soft tyres and he's going to start the race in last. And now we build up for the start of the Singapore Grand Prix. This is round nine of the late breaking on Racing League. And you can see it's Jay Ghost on the left. It's Ricky on the right. Which one of them is going to get the best start and lead into turn one? Jay Ghost seems to have got a pretty good start. No, Ricky, he's already got Jay Ghost into the first corner. The Haas leads. Jack Hickey follows in behind. A Force India has had to cut the corner there. And he'll have to give up the position, surely. But Ricky, it, what a start he got. And there's contact with the Williams further back, I think. There was carbon fibre flying off the car. Uh, Caesar T-Pain is last of the lot. Purple Petrol has dropped a lot of places. In fact, both Mercedes have. Uh, and now Jay Ghost is staring at the back of the Haas. He leads. Yeah, Caesar T-Pain played Mr. Safety Car at the start of that race, pulled right to the inside of the track, braked incredibly early and kept himself completely out of trouble. I think he knows what he's doing from the back of that grid now. We've seen him win twice from outside the top 10. He's there to get a result, so he's not going to put himself into any trouble. He's the only driver on the soft tyres. He's here for a long time. As he shapes up a move down the inside of Curly Apex, that's the first overtake done. Yeah, how many more is he going to be able to achieve before this 31 lap race is over? Ricky still defending from Jay Ghost, who is right on the back of him. And Jay Ghost, after conceding the lead in the first corner, is going to be looking to take it straight back. And he goes to the outside and Ricky's had to slow oh, down. Has Ricky had any contact with the barrier there? I think he's avoided it, but he has conceded the lead. Jay Ghost is back where he was. 
Yeah, Hoback, who looked very twitchy in qualifying, miraculously got that great position, is actually dropping the likes of DJ Marshall and Johannes behind him. Johannes had a great start to this race. DJ Marshall was the reason why Hoback had to take to the Astra at the start of the race. They had hit tyre into tyre, so no damage for either of them, but uh, a feisty start from the Sauber driver. I mean, Hoback's looking good. He's sort of lining up Jack Hickey. He is. He's only two tenths off Jack Hickey, and he's had to go defensive into the first corner. Jack Hickey will be wanting to get on the back of the top two guys, and Hoback, after just one lap, has picked <laughs> up a three-second time penalty. Oh, well, the Mercedes have just fought each other out, so Purple Petrol moves up to 10th place in front of Mr. Cycles, saying Gilzo is in that fight as well, and Caesar T. Payne watches and waits. This is how he moves up, everyone. This is how he makes the positions. As, oh, a move from Gilzo, sending it out the inside. Hasn't made it stick. But again, is Caesar T. Payne just going to pick up the pieces? Yeah, Curly Apex went into the pits after that first lap, and Caesar T. Payne now lining up a move on Psycho, saying... He's had a dreadful first two laps, much like he did in Mexico last time out. Psycho Saint is still there, but he has conceded the position. He's been forced into it, and Psycho Saint, after starting in P4, is now in P13. Uh, and you can see Hapuli Boy and Johannes, and Hapuli Boy seems to have got the job done on Johannes. Johannes will have the inside, and right behind them, it's the Ferrari of Neles and Maynard in the Red Bull going at it. Purple Petrol looks like he's made, oh he's gone very wide into that corner, Gilzo's going to make a move around the outside, this is all going to help Caesar T playing, he's going to look to make a move going into the long right hand down the straight, he's careful not to dive from it down the inside, and what is happening to Purple Petrol there, maybe those tyres have gone off already, but Caesar T playing up to 11th place. Yeah I think you're right, I think if he can, oh hang on, we've had a yellow flag, home back backwards! Johannes and Mena both get three seconds. It's started, everyone. The penalties are raining down. This group in the middle for uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth are all incredibly close together. Uh, lots of corner cutting on, uh, on between them. We saw last race how the likes of Papuli Boy picked up, what, 18 seconds of time penalties. So they're not afraid to extend the track a little bit for an advantage. But he'll be wanting to get past Gilzo as soon as possible. As he tries oh, to take, wide. yeah, he tried to take a wide line there, but I don't think it's benefited him at all. And Mena looking to make a move on Neles, and he's got it done. Mena into P7. Yeah, the question is, what's Gilzo going to do? Is he going to keep going? Because he needs to make some sort of strategy work, and going in this early means it's difficult to do. Neles has gone into the pits, but in doing so, has picked up a five-second stop go. Yeah, Caesar has got past Gilzo. That last corner was just too tough for Gilzo without a front wing. And this now unleashes Caesar T-Pain, who has got an eight-second gap to Manger. But that's plenty of room for him to put his foot down and use those soft tyres. They're going to be the least swarm on the track. Let's see if he can take advantage of those and close the gap. The gaps out front haven't really changed much, but actually Ricky, in the last couple of laps, has got the gap down to under a second. So he will have DRS to his advantage. Uh, Jack Hickey still about 1.2 behind Ricky, so he's staying with them, but isn't quite close enough to be a threat. Johannes has dived up the inside. I didn't even see that coming. What a move from Johannes. Yeah, I don't think it's quite over yet, but yes, Johannes has been able to get the move done. He conceded the position. Oh. Johannes is yeah. in the wall. Just as he was looking to get an overtake done, he's overcooked it, and his left tyre has become dislodged. Dislodged is a fantastic word, but I am surprised we have not seen a safety car or a VSC in that incident. All of a sudden, it looked like Johannes had the move done, booked, finished in the bag. And then next thing you know, the camera pans and bam, out of the race. I would not have put money on Johannes being the first retiree in this race. He's been very solid so far in the year. He's only retired from one race previously. Mayna looking to go up the inside of a Pooley boy, who I think must be struggling with tyre wear now. And yes, Mayna. Clinical as you like, into P5. Hippoli boy, of course, he dropped the position to Johannes before he binned it. Uh, and I think Ricky must have had a bad lap because Jack Hickey's much closer to him. Yeah, and it looks as though Mayna and DJ Marshall are on track next to each other once again. Just a second separates the old warriors that we've seen fight so many times. Let's see how this one pans out. It's going to be interesting. Mayna's definitely improved coming through this season. His race has got a lot more clinical. He's a lot more efficient and he's clean. His penalties still rack up a little bit, but his racecraft is better. And the gap now only five tenths to the salvage driver. Yeah, DJ Marshall will be wanting to protect his position, but Mayna seems to have the edge on him at the moment. 
Um, so they will probably come into combat at some point uh, in the very near future. Yeah, Hickey is all over Ricky. There's literally a 10 minute. And Ricky has hit the barrier. Surely damage for him there. And Hickey now all over him. And with the front wing damage, he might have too much for him. Is Ricky going to yeah, go into the pits here? He definitely does have damage. He's staying out. But now Hickey is surely going to seize the initiative. Is he going to have a run down into turn one? He needs to make sure that Jacos doesn't get too far away. Hickey will still be wanting the win. Uh, Mega's making a move on DJ Marshall. He's gone down the outside. And he's got the move done. Fourth place for Mega. Beautiful stuff from Mena, and he's on a mission here today. He's got into P4, and Jack Hickey now seems to have got the job done, and Ricky... See, the teammate's got a bloody penalty. I did say he was cutting a lot of corners behind Gilzo, and I think to make up time, he's desperately trying to shorten the track as much as possible. That's the first penalty we've seen for him for a long time, if not the whole season. It's raining. Oh, you yeah, are it is. right. Maybe that is why those with front wing damage have decided home to back, stay out. Home back's around again. Home back is crashed again. He's, he's doing donuts on the start finish line. I appreciate the style, but surely, yes, Ben, the front runners are all going to pull into intermediate tyres, and that's why they've stayed out. Yeah, I mean, from Gilzo's perspective and, and Ricky's perspective, both of them we know have front wing damage, and maybe a few others do as well. But maybe they thought it was worth staying out and then going on to the intermediate tyres. Homeback has left the session. He is still technically racing, though. Um, surely this rain does spice things up a bit. Now, the question is, with the rain falling down, and obviously it's not too, too bad yet, so the drivers won't be coming in for intermediate tyres for a few laps, who should, out of those top guys, bite the bullet and go first? What? Yeah, but Purple Petrol, we know he, uh, he ends up in the point somehow. Uh, he's, oh, he's well, in the wall now, though. He'll end up in the point somehow. It doesn't matter. <laughs> he always does. Wow, purple boy. Petrol's out of the race. He's... No, Purple no! Petrol. Purple you Petrol. I have jinxed it. I've jinxed another one. Purple Petrol retires from the race. Coming into this race, he'd competed in 28 races and he'd scored points at 22 of them. He's so consistent. But at Singapore, he faces the DNF. Yeah, I think these Ultrasoft tyres have the ability to last... Uh, a few more laps yet I would have guessed that about 13 laps is where they really start to drop off but in these conditions it's not worth coming in for another oh, set of tries and oh. DJ Marshall really struggling with the conditions here and Caesar T-Pain is right on the back of him now there's just three temps between them uh, and the question is will he put up a fight and it, it does so, yeah, oh. Oh. they're fighting each other pretty fairly uh, and DJ Marshall does cut him off a little bit there. We know DJ Ooh, Marshall DJ is a great Marshall defender, but no. Corner. Yeah, DJ Marshall has conceded P6. Uh, and now we wait to see, are either of these gonna, drivers going to dive into the pits? Yeah, Gilzo's into the pits. And now we wait to see what tyres he's going on to. Surely when he peels in, no, I think that's the soft. That's the soft compound tyre, so maybe these drivers are not expecting the rain to get any worse. Yeah, and oh, you can see Mayna. I think all of the cars now are really struggling out of the corners. Jay Ghost has gone into the pits. We wait to see what tyres he's putting on. Will it be the soft compound? Jack Icky doing exactly the same. Ricky's gone wide. They must all be coming in now, surely. And Intermediate. soft again. Soft. Oh, soft, no. Softs for Jay Ghost. And um, for Jack Hickey, Jack Hickey it's as well. Soft. Yeah, Ricky picks up a five second stop go penalty. That will promote Mayna into the top three then, if all stays the same at the end of the race. Hippoli Boy has stayed out for one more lap, but you can see everyone's coming in. Caesar T-Pain's coming in very early. Mayna's gone on to the Inters. So I think Caesar T-Pain's doing the same. I think this means that Caesar T-Pain could be into second or third. Ricky's been held for his penalty. Yeah, so we've got... Uh, oh, and DJ Marshall's picked up another three seconds penalty. Just to update everyone here. Mayna, Ricky, Caesar T-Pain have all come into the pits and put on the intermediate tyres. But Jay Ghosts and Jack Kiki have gone out and back DJ out on the soft. And DRS is disabled. That could be a masterstroke from those three drivers. And the McLarens are fighting side by side. They are. Hapuli Boy hasn't stopped yet and he's not giving up the position easily to Jay Ghost. And Jay Ghost will be cursing him. He wants to get past as soon as possible. Uh, but they're you know both why, struggling. 
They're both going to be going into the pits this lap for intermediate tyres. Yeah, they're going to both have to. One of them's going to have to queue behind the other. And if they are this both going into the pits, pits. Right. well, yeah, if they're going to go back into the pits onto the intermediate tyres, Mayna might well have the net lead of this race. Oh, Jay goes is saying out. Oh, no, Hapuli's missed the pit lane. He's managed to just creep it back in. Yeah, so Hapuli boy is into the pit. So is DJ Marshall. And Jack Hickey's carrying on as well. So I think they are going to brave it out here on the dry compound tyres and hope that the weather improves. Yeah, Hapuli boy is going on to those intermediate tyres. So he's joining them on the other strategy. DJ Marshall has held him up. He's going on the soft tyre. DJ Marshall does not want the intermediate tyre. So mixed strategies across the field. We'll see what one prevails. But this is incredibly interesting. Season T thing gets another oh, wow. seconds. Bear in mind, right now we have six drivers on the intermediate tyres and five drivers on the softs. So there is a complete split here. Um, interestingly, in those pit stops, Jack Hickey's now only five seconds behind Jay Ghost, so he must have been really held up behind a Pooley boy, because it was over ten seconds at one point. Uh, Caesar t -Pain is right on the back of Ricky. At the same time, all of these guys are building on the top two, because Maine is only 1.7 away now, and Caesar going oh, for contact. a move, and there's contact! Contact between Ricky and Caesar. Ricky holds the position. But Caesar is still behind. Yeah, Mayna right on the back of Jack Hickey. It's clear that the intermediate tyres are the best ones at the moment. Look at the amount of grip he's got out the corner compared to Hickey. Mayna sweeps into P2. Surely they would have gone into the pits if it wasn't set to dry up. Because otherwise they are ruining their races here, Jay Ghost and Jack Hickey. Remember, DJ Marshall and Gilzo are also on the softs. They're all on the same straight. All of a sudden the top five are separated by three seconds. Jack Hickey under pressure from Ricky and Ricky swept around the outside of him. He's had to use a bit too much circuit to do it, but Ricky's into P3 and Caesar T Pain looks like he's going to follow him through. So Jack Hickey's all the way down to P5. And Mayer's in the lead. Mayer has taken the lead. A great move down the inside of Jago's. The intermediate tire is the tire to be on, but for how long will it carry on for the second half of this race? We are only at the halfway point. Mayner has only got one podium to his name in the history of our league, but he is currently leading this race by nearly two seconds already. 2.3. The gap is increasing and increasing. And Ricky is just going past Jago now, so the intermediate tyre has got such grip out of these corners. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Caesar T Pain, who's starting on the back row of the grid on the wrong tyre, who's going to move into third place. He's got it already. It's on the podium. What a drive from these three. Uh, Jack Hickey is really doing much better than Jay Ghost is in these conditions because he's only four tenths off the back of the McLaren now. Hapuli Boy will be looking to overtake both of them as he is on the intermediate tyres. But uh, something to bear in mind, if it does end up drying up and this ends up being the right strategy, Jack Hickey looks in a good position. Yeah, he's, his front wing nearly touching the back when these three are separated by... Oh, and inside, the inside goes Hapuli Boy. There's contact. No front wing damage by the way. And DRS is enabled again. The track is drying. The question is, how much of an... Oh, God! Oh, Hapuli Boy's in the wall! Hickey spins Hapuli Boy down the straight! Hapuli Boy into the wall. And he is down to P6 with half a front wing. So Ricky's decided to get rid of these inters. He wants to get back onto some... Mainers in as well. Caesar T. Payne is the only one that stays out of the top three. Yeah, surely they will be going back on to... Yeah, they'll go, both go on to soft tyres oh, now. Oh, that's... I'm just steering like a shopping trolley on Caesar's car. I have to say, Mayner, 14.7 seconds behind Jack Hickey and Jay Ghosts. It was tough for the two of them on those soft tyres, but I think it was the right call. Yeah. And he's, uh, yeah, Jay Ghost is only one and a half seconds behind Caesar t -Pain now. Uh, Caesar t -Pain is doing a beautiful job of being a mobile chicane here for uh, Jay Ghosts. Jagos doesn't need to be, just be patient because he's going to get past it. No, Jack Hickey's going to have him if he's too patient. Yeah, Caesar T Pain is, of course, going to go right oh, into the pits. Yep. I think Jack, Jack Hickey, Hickey avoided contact. So oh, Caesar T Pain inside. now. Jack Hickey's taking What's advantage. On? Jack Hickey oh into the God. lead. J uh, Jack Hickey managed to hold off Jagos down the start finish straight once again. Can he do it down the even longer straight, which they're just approaching? Jack Hickey slid through that corner, really pushing the car. He's attacking the, the corners. He's gaining, though. Jagos is still gaining. Jack Hickey's pulled to the inside. Jagos going down the outside. He's late braked. 
and they're equal through the corner. Me and Jack Hickey had a fight in the same corner last year, and Jack Hickey comes out on top, keeping the lead. Yeah, it's roles reversed. Jack Hickey was the one pressurising Usam that time out, and now Jack Hickey's the one who's having to put on a defensive masterclass against Jay Ghost. Uh, the gap is still only half a second, and Jay Ghost a couple of times has brushed that right front tyre on Barrys. I don't think he's had any damage yet again, but he needs to watch out, because if he was to sustain some damage, uh, I don't think he'd be able to catch Jack Hickey. Jay Ghost has gone down the outside and Hickey's there again, but he's got the move done. Jay Ghost goes around the whole way round the outside, the long way round, and he moves up into first place. What a move there from the McLaren driver. Yeah, Jack Hickey not quite close enough to Jay Ghost, and you would assume Jay Ghost being trapped up behind Jack Hickey for that length of time, he will have the pace to get away. Uh, but we know Jack Hickey is dogged. He doesn't like just giving away a position. So if there's any opportunity he can get it back, He'll take it. Ricky all over the back of Mainer now. It's only a matter of time, surely, before he gets this move done. Mainer does that sector so much better than Ricky there, though. Yeah, Mainer is still showing about the same pace as the top two guys. In fact, he's he's probably the same pace as Jay Ghost and slightly quicker than Jack Hickey. Of course, it is 11 seconds, so we don't expect them to be competing for the lead. Jagos and Jack Hickey, of course, sticking to that one-stop strategy and not going for the intermediate tyres earlier on when it was raining. Yeah, Caesar T-Pain isn't really catching DJ Marshall. Despite being on the softer tyre, uh, and they are four laps fresher as well, he hasn't really been able to do much about the gap. It's still only, it's still about 1.4. It's been that for, well, since Caesar T-Pain's come into the pits, really. Yeah. Ricky is staying right on the back of Mainer and has clearly still got a lot of pace behind him. Um, we think Ricky's got six seconds worth of penalties. So. Nellez is out. Nellez, he did so well getting to lap 24, but he's not going to pick up any points today. Ricky is much closer this time. Here we go. Lining him up. Is he going to... No, oh, Ricky! Contact with the wall, but he still might be able to get the move done. Contact with the wall. Main has been forced wide. wide. And Mina's going to have the Mane inside line for the corner, but Ricky's got the advantage around the outside. And Ricky, after lap after lap behind him, has finally got into P3. It would have been very interesting with P3 and P4, Ricky and Mina, if those intermediate tyres had been in effect for a little bit longer. If the rain had lasted just for another three or four laps, would that have been enough to get them in the, in the conversation for a win? Mainers. I think it would have been, and... Main, but Mainer is struggling on a couple of corners, but the question is, will someone else bing it into a wall? We've seen it happen a few times. Mainer building on Ricky. Ricky got the overtake done on him last time out. And now Mainer's looking for a carbon copy as he goes around the outside of Ricky. And the Haas has to concede P3. That Mainer. Was, that was filthy. So pretty boy, four tenths from Caesar T paying. Yeah, and has he got enough? to try something into turn one. He's got plenty of ERS actually, he's got 57% at the moment, so he's got more than enough to launch an attack here and take P6 away from the Sauber driver and to add misery to Caesar T. Payne's already tough race. And I think he's done that corner much, much better. He has, and Hapuli boy has got the advantage here. He has put ERS on hot lap and he's trying to defend. Oh. And Caesar T-Pain did go to the inside of the track and that's enough to preserve it. But Hippuli Boy again so much better out of the corner and it's only a matter of time here before Hippuli Boy gets the move done. And now going into turn one yet again is Hippuli Boy going to have the run this time out. You can see him, he is really building this time and he'll go for a move up the inside. Caesar breaks as late as he can and that was clever from him because he has kept the position but every single corner it gets tougher and tougher to defend. But we need to remember that Hapu Boy's tyres are actually a lap older than Caesar T Pay's. And once again, Caesar T Pay takes that corner, turning Hapu already alongside. It's not going to be instant this time. It looks like Hapu Boy has got the move done and dusting. Caesar T Pay can break late. He's defending, he's squeezing wide, but Hapu Boy keeps it around the outside. And they're going to be neck and neck into the next corner. Once again, a late break from Caesar T Pay, who's touched the wall there. And Hapu Boy sails through into sixth place. Nice. Yeah, it took some contact into the wall, but Hippuli Boy has been able to get into P6, and Caesar T-Pain is going to have to deal with being P7 and only the Force India guys behind. Now the question needs to be asked, 
Can Gilzo close a 31 second gap in one and a half laps and take Caesar T Pain? I reckon so. It's funny you should mention that because I'm pretty sure it was 35 just like half a lap ago because he is really <laughs> absolutely storming it out there. I reckon that. Yep, 29 seconds is the gap. This could be a fastest lap incoming from Gilzo. I'm um, stay on board. Gilzo, is that a tough race? He started last. Um, and he had front wing damage in his first thing, and it means he is struggling around in P8. But with that, he goes Boom. at 137.5. That would have beaten most people in qualifying. <laughs> Jay Goats enters sector three. He's leading the way by eight and a half seconds. He's comfortably driving around these last corners now. It looks like he's cruising, although his fuel is flashing red, so he's got to be careful not to run out of fuel. That could be a little bit embarrassing. But he comes under the towel for the last time through the the, uh, the quick chicane there, the right, the left. He can see the final corner. It's been a tough race. He's lost the league several times. He rounds the final corner, past the pit entrance, and across the line to wing the Singapore Grand Prix. Fireworks deserved for Jay Ghosts as the circuit lights up multicolored style and Jack Hickey is going to cross the line in P2. He fought well and he's back on the podium yet again. His consistent run of form is continuing here. Uh, and Mayner, what a race he's been able to produce. After starting well outside the top 10, he is going to claim his first podium of the year. Mayner P3. A fantastic drive from Maynard as Ricky rounds out in the background for P4. And DJ Marshall was a little way back, had a tough race, but actually a very strong race. Comes round in fifth place and then a long way back. Still going through sector three is the other McLaren. Her boy needs to be careful. The penalties are a little bit close. He could have picked up another three seconts there. And he's going to come round for sixth place. And Caesar T. Payne, a tough race. He's going to finish the race in the pit lane for seventh place. That's a bit of a bit of a sulk there I reckon from season two pain. Yeah, which means the only person left on circuit is Gilzo who's hammering it on the Hypersoft tyres. He's already got his fastest lap so he can be content with that. He will also pick up four points which will put him to 42 for the year. Has he run out of fuel? I think he's run out of petrol. No, no, he's just, he's just having a bit of fun. Oh, he's drifting around the last corner! What a drift! Tokyo Drift here at Formula 1. We love that from Gil. Singapore Drift. Yeah, we're due south of Tokyo, but it was a great drift nonetheless. Let's get to the podium. There we have it then. Jay Goes, who takes the top step. A fantastic drive from him and well-deserved. He's joined by Mr. Consistent, Jack Hickey. What a drive. He put up a great fight, but it wasn't quite to be. And there, the unexpected driver of the day. The dark horse, but surely one of the drivers of the day. Mainer rounds out the podium in third. And now we can see official confirmation of the results here from round nine, Singapore Grand Prix. Jay Ghosts qualified on pole when he was able to convert it into the race win, 9.3 seconds ahead of Jack Hickey in P2. Maynard made up 10 places in the race as he finishes P3 for his first podium of the year, the fastest two-stopper out there. And Ricky, after starting on the front row, will have to make do with P4. DJ Marshall, another consistent result for him in P5. Hapuli Boy made up places from his starting position in P6. Caesar T-Pain, his run of four race wins is over. He is down in P7 in that Alfa Romeo Salva. Gilzo and Homeback round out the point scoring positions in P8 and P9. Force India struggling today. Neles crashed out from the race in P10. And the same can be said for the bottom four there. Curly Apex, the two Mercedes of Purple Petrol, Mr. Psycho Sane and Johannes. Round 10 emanates from Monza, Italy. Catch us same place, same time next week. I've been Ben Hocking. I've been Harry E. And I've been Samuel Sage. And remember, keep breaking late.